Hey everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101. I saw it change it up a little bit. Uh, I like to do topics every once in a while. You know, I like to do topics that people generally want to talk about. So instead of just doing the typical EDC update, I wanted to talk about it a little bit in a more logical sense in regards to how we choose the things that we choose and in what regard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down. I might do two, I might do three, I'm not sure. But I want to be more specific about the EDC items in particular and choosing the right stuff for you. So in this one, I want to focus more upon EDC items that are the most generally useful. Like the things that are going to do the most for you because you carry them every day and you have need for them every day and you use them a lot. And then maybe also what else could those things be good for in terms of any kind of uh, emergency situation. So it's so inevitably when we talk about generally useful, this first one is not going to include a firearm because we don't generally run around shooting things every day. That would be something for a different uh, EDC video. So I'm going to show you what I came up with for the five most generally useful items of mine. And what I want to hear back is what would be those five things for you. So it's not a matter of me telling you because I'm on, I'm on the video. This is what you're supposed to have not doing that I'm saying I'm gonna give you what I chose give you my logic and then I want to hear what everybody else has to say because not only do I want to see what everyone else has to say but I also want to see if someone comes up with things that I might actually deem more important to me than what I chose so if you want to follow along with me on this and see what I came up with for the five most generally useful EDC items then don't go away Now, because I'm going a different route than I've gone in the past with these EDC lists and br breaking them down, and this is the general use, uh, it's liable to look a little bit different. But I'm also going to not only give my five, but I'm going to show them in the order that they are the most used. So starting off with number one should be obvious, but your smartphone. Your smart, I mean, let's face it, you all know this. These devices do damn near everything for us. We use them all day, every day. And if you set yours up smartly and not just, over, you know, keep it maintained, don't overflow it with a lot of stuff, uh, the number of devices that this one device replaces is astounding. From cameras to compasses to picture viewers to computer getting on the internet to check in your heart rate I mean we could just go on and on and on and on but the key thing I want to point I want to make here is you should definitely at least try to get the best phone possible now this one here is a note 8 they have there's been a note 9 that's come up and now the uh, the new S, I think it's the S10, is out, and they have more capabilities. But at the time, this phone was so good and had so many features that I use. It it still runs like a champ. I don't see a need to rush out and upgrade it yet, even though I've been eligible for some time. So now I've even gone so far, I'm not doing it right now because obviously I have to film the phone, but at least half the time I'm starting to do my videos with this thing because the camera's better. It gets better light. Uh, sometimes it's a pain in the butt for certain things, but for the most part, this is the single most important EDC item that I carry and use. The second item, and this one's I think is probably new for like you know, these 5 EDC item lists for me but that's because again we're going in a different direction this time and that would be a quality portable power bank 
Why? Well, in my case, I use the phone a lot more than most people probably do because I'm running my entire business enterprise off of it. I'm doing everything with it. Uh, when I'm talking to you guys on Facebook and YouTube and all that stuff, it's generally through that. The only thing I use my MacBook Pro for is video editing. So the battery's not going to last forever. So you want to pick something that is going to be that's going to fit your actual usage because obviously the more capa the more uh, the more power that it carries, the bigger the battery's going to be. And I've got several of these, but this one is an anchor. It is a uh, power core 20,000 and all of these anchors are different I mean some of the new anchors that are out yet have capabilities that make me want to upgrade my Mac because you can use it with your MacBook Pros but MacBook Pros never freaking die so <laughs> it's mine's a two, 2013 it runs as good as you know the first year so I don't know when I'll ever upgrade that but in this case, what's important to me with this one is 20,000 mAh power capacity is enough to get me through a 24-hour period with extreme heavy use. Extreme heavy use, which I almost never, ever do. This particular one has two power inputs, which allows it to charge faster. So this is not only going to power my phone, but everything else that I have that plugs in which some of the other things you may end up seeing but it is extremely useful and in terms of being on this list there is not a single day that I am not using one of these so much use that my phone is always plugged into one but you may not be that much of a power user maybe you can get by with something a little bit smaller a little bit more portable like a 5000 or a 10,000 mAh but uh, for me, yeah, right here, these two things out of my EDC, you'll never catch me without them. Okay, the next one is tricky because I don't generally always have this on me. So why is it on my list? It's on my list because it's never any further than whatever bag I'm using that day. And I'm also trying to use the same kind of mentality people use like if they go on like the show alone. When you really, really got to think about your items and what those items can do. So people would probably naturally assume that the next item would be a folder, right? You know, that's my paramilitary 2. It's the one I have been carrying the most off often. You know, sometimes I switch it out for the amalgam. But that's not on the list. So what I'm going to put on here, let's just call this a multi-tool. But in this case, it's a Leatherman Wave Plus. Now, it's, on some instances, I may actually carry a, a Victorinox, you know, Swiss Champ Plus. A little bit lighter. And the biggest difference between these two different types of multi-tools is pliers and wire cutters. But, if I had to pick five items, which item is logically going to do more for me? The Spyderco Mil Paramilitary 2 or the, the Leatherman Wave Plus? I mean, it is a no-brainer. There, I've got my straight edge. There, I've got a serrated edge. And you've got all the other tools that come with a multi-tool. So <clears throat> I'm not always using multi-tool tools every day. I'm definitely using a knife every day. Uh, the reason why in this particular case lately I've been carrying this more <laughs> isn't for any kind of like survival purpose, but it's for the bottle opener. See, I still, I, I mainly drink alkaline water all day. But I still like to have, you know, a pop or soda, depending on what part of the country you live in. But I've really taken to going down to the Hispanic grocery and, and buying the, the Mexican Coke. It's just so much better. So, you, and you can't twist that off. So I need a bottle opener, and this is like the only bottle opener I have in the house. But either one of these 
obviously, if you're thinking logically in terms of what you can carry on you that's going to do the most, especially for the sort of instances that you don't foresee, either one of these is going to do more for you than a folder. Does that mean I'm not carrying my folder? Of course not. But this is, this is a logical uh, exercise here. So let's just say multi-tool of your choice is going to be number three. All right, getting to number four and number five. And when it comes to number four and number five, it's kind of a coin toss as to which get used more. So I'm just going to go the way I'm going to go. And in this case, obviously, this one should have been obvious. We're going to talk about a flashlight. And the as far as choosing goes, it's always going to be something that has the capability of being charged with an onboard input as opposed to one that requires you to take the battery out and place it in an external charger because that might not be available. See with this, with heavy use, I can just top it off while I'm going with item number two. Item number two keeps item number one and item number four going. And item number six, but we're not talking about that. <laughs> but is that you know this is a Phoenix UC35. It's probably not my favorite Phoenix, but I've got other ones that you hear me talk about a lot that I've recently reviewed or or just keep coming back to and what the, all those have in common are USB ports and as far as the smallest one that I use the most often you know what let me, let me grab it let me just throw that in here now obviously I'm choosing this because it's brighter goes further uh, rechargeable has more capability and it's got the cool factor but if there's one flashlight for EDC that I think should be if it's not Jessica listed it should be this is a Hall of freaking Fame keychain light matter of fact it is I am of the opinion that this is the best keychain light out there and that is the night core tip now this is one of two that I own that I've had for several years I've never had a tip break I've never had a, a tip conk out on me. And these things have freaking exposed inputs. I mean, they're not even like water resistant. That just goes to show that a lot of times people focus on things that don't happen all that often. I mean, regular use, obviously regular use. I mean, look at the finish on this thing. For a long, long, long time. It gets bright. I want to say it's 360 lumens on high. It's easy to manage the butt. I mean, everything about this is perfect. If they upgrade, I mean, they keep making fancier ones. That's the problem. What, what they should do is just make one of these with a rubber plug that's built in so that it is water resistant and not change anything else. I mean, the... <laughs> The new one, I forget, I think it's called the Tup. I mean, good lord, that thing's just a bit over the top. But I, that's not even really a keychain light. This is a keychain light, and this keychain light is freaking awesome. I use them all the time. And so, especially with people on a budget that's just going to need a regular use flashlight. You're not strobing bad guys or trying to spotlight deer, which I don't think you're allowed to do, but oh well. <laughs> from like a hundred miles away this does it all and it's got pretty good runtime too I've never really had a, an occasion where I had to where it, it just died on me when I needed it and it charges very quickly too so I'm gonna put both of those on there it's kinda like I did with the multi-tool two different flavors but EDC flashlight the final thing for the five most useful general purpose EDC items maybe not everybody will agree with this but this is also hardwired into my brain as far as you know survival emergency preparedness and things like that the oldest tool in human history next to the knife and that is fire so in this case we're talking about a lighter 
and if we're being super specific here, we're talking about is I'm talking about a Zippo lighter with a Thunderbird torch insert. I've been talking about this Thunderbird torch insert for I want to say I mean I was like that was like two houses ago, so at least five or six years. I've only replaced this once and not because it broke, but because somebody else needed it and I gave it away as a gift and I just ordered another one. Fits nice in the Zippo case of your choice. This is my do-it-yourself Constantine lighter. <laughs> See, they actually started producing the Constantine lighters, but they want like 90 some freaking dollars for it. I'm like, you're crazy. So I made my own, and the difference between my Constantine lighter and the Zippo Constantine lighter is my Constantine lighter actually has a properly blessed Benedict metal. So mine's actually a little bit better. But this is the most common one that I carry, but sometimes you've seen this a lot here lately. This is a, a butane torch that I found. And you can find these online if you look, but I got mine at a grocery uh, chain called Kroger's. And I love this one. It's just the right size. It's got good capacity. And when you're using it, for whatever you're working on just the way that it lines up and where the button is it's highly reliable I've been using these a lot since I found them and none of them have gone bad on me I've refilled them dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of times because I'm one of those people that well this one needs filled I top things off <laughs> every day if I'm using it I'm just it's it's an OCD sort of thing but to make it short and simple, which I'm generally incapable of doing, the last item is going to be a torch lighter. And of course, in, in addition to general purpose stuff, obviously we never know when some sort of situation is going to befall us and fire is one of the biggest and most important things that you need to be able to create. So. This, along with stuff like those uh, Spartan strips or whatever they're called, they're in my wallet. I always have the ability to make fire or, f or thaw out a frozen keyhole on my car because it's Ohio and Ohio sucks. And it was like warm yesterday and today it's a nice storm. Or singeing paracord or just, I, I use these things for everything. So to recap in the category of five most useful general purpose everyday carry items the best smartphone you can afford a good quality portable power bank a good quality multi-tool a good quality USB rechargeable flashlight and a good quality lighter slash torch so now that we've covered that one I want to know what you think as far as the five general items. Now keep in mind we'll probably do a couple more uh, different categories. So there might be one like five items for self-aid, self-rescue, medical type stuff. You know, generally gonna revolve around bleeding. Uh, there might be not do one that's more defensive because if we don't do something where we say gun in the list people will lose their minds so self-defense uh security that sort of thing and then help me think of some other ones that we can do i don't want to do a whole bunch of them but maybe i could see doing like three three or four as long as they're extremely pertinent but yeah a lot of people leave the phone out of that list i mean maybe it's because we take it for granted maybe because we just assume that everyone's gonna have one but you're carrying it it takes up space it takes up weight so we should really consider the amount of things that it can do for you I mean especially even with you know medical stuff as well there's so many different apps and things when a couple weeks ago you know my son's in Weeblo one and 
the scoutmaster is a firefighter paramedic and he did uh, a class for first day CPR, that sort of thing. And he showed us an app. I forget what it's called. Maybe I'll put it down below. But uh, the more people that use it, the better. And what that does is like if someone's having a heart attack and they call 911 and I don't, I forget if they use the app or whatnot. It's been a while since I looked at it because it just wasn't beeping. But it alerts other people that no CPR in that area that assistance is needed. And it's funny because when you're on the internet, everyone on the internet tells you, you should never even think about putting a band-aid on somebody unless you've had three years of medical training. But what, what the guy that actually does the job of paramedic and saving people's lives said is, first of all, kind of going off topic here, but they, uh, they've changed CPR to where they no longer require breaths. And he's like, I'm 99% sure the reason they did that is because people weren't doing CPR because they don't want to put their mouth on a stranger's mouth, especially if they're puking and all that sort of stuff. So they just say, just do compressions. And he also said, bad CPR is better than no CPR. He's like, the almost 100% almost of the time, he said, the difference between whether somebody makes it or not is if someone is there performing CPR by the time they get there. Well, something to keep in mind. But little things like that are attached to your phone. You know, GPS, finding your, I mean, there's some, well, what if ninjas, stay back, stay back. Well, if we have an EMP and your phone doesn't work, well, then we deal with it at that time, okay? That's probably, my phone is going to be like the last thing I'm worried about if, that, if one second after it happens. But we're talking about everyday life. Life as we've known it for a long, long time, not whatever mythical apocalypse might or might not happen. So that's my thoughts. So give me your thoughts on the five items and give me your thoughts on other five item lists that you would like to see done and discussed in regards to everyday carry. So that's all I got for right now. Christian Prepare Mind 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click a like, share, and subscribe. Check out the links down below. I'll be back with another video here soon, so see you then.